out there in YouTube land, this is Morris Mann, and as always, I thank you guys for coming to my channel. Today I'm going to do another short special video per request, and I'm sorry I didn't get around to getting this video done sooner. But uh, my subscribers asked me, uh, why don't you do a top 10 list of your favorite artists, vocalists. So I'm going to do that today. And as always, I start off by saying this. Uh, I won't say that this is the list, quote unquote, the best because if I said this were you know, the 10 best vocalists, I'd get a bunch of comments saying, why didn't these people make the list and why these people did? So again, I'm gonna play it safe and give you my personal 10 favorite vocalists. Now this list can easily be 30 because there's just so many vocalists that I admire, but unfortunately, you know, I had to condense it down to 10, but it doesn't take away from the others that did make the list. So again, the top 10, my top 10 vocalists. And you might be a little bit surprised with some of my entries because I'm kind of not like typical. You know, there are a lot of obscure artists out there that are tremendous that just didn't get their due. And some of those artists made my list today. But I'm going to start off with uh, Charlie Wilson of the Gap Band and the reason why. I think Charlie Wilson was one of the first vocalists to kind of pattern his style uh, around the, the great Stevie Wonder. Because when you think of soul singing, you know, Stevie is always up there in your top 10 list or your top, your top list. So uh, he did a great job. And another reason why Charlie Wilson of the Gap Band has made my list because he's, his voice is very du durable. Charlie Wilson has been in the business for, what, maybe 30-something years, and he still sounds great. He can still sing the songs that he performed with the Gap Band back in the 70s in the same key. And a lot of vocalists over years, you know, their voice deteriorate. It's not what it used to be, so therefore they're a mere shadow of what they used to be. But I think Charlie Wilson has been very doable, and his voice seems to have still continued to be such a great force. So that's why Charlie Wilson of the Gap Band made my list. Next on the list is Freddie Garrity. Now, initially my, people might say, who is Freddie Garrity? And Freddie Garrity was the lead singer of a group from England around the Beatles era in the 60s called Freddie and the Dreamers. And I was always a big Freddie and the Dreamers fan. Their compositions, their musicianship, uh, they were up there as far as up there with the Beatles to me on my, on my favorite list. So that's why Freddie Garrity made my list because he's a great singer and I think we lost him about two years ago, a couple years ago. Next on the list is Billy Joel. From day one I was a big Billy Joel fan. And what I love about Billy Joel's performances is uh, I'm kind of in that mindset where I don't like to do the same thing over and over and over and it sounds like the one that I did before and the one that I did before. That's why my musical covers are very uh, versatile. Uh, I'm not just going to do R&B, not just going to do rock, not just going to do country and western. I try to do a little bit of everything and mash them together to keep it interesting. And Billy Joel has been one of those vibe vocalists where from track to track he sounds different. You know, and it's done deliberately because, you know, no one wants to recycle the same product over and over. And here's a good example of that. And not knocking this group uh, when JT, the original JT, was with Cool and the Gang, not to be, not to be confused with Justin Timberlake. Uh, the majority of the Cool and the Gang songs, should I say JT's vocals, they were the same. It's like he approached the next song project like the one before. And again, I'm not knocking him. That's just his style, but it's just so very recognizable that it didn't really change. So that's why Billy Joel made my list because he's very versatile. There were some songs that I heard that before the song had played out on the radio, I'm like, who is that? And then they say, Billy Joel. I was like, wow, vocally he went another direction and it was pretty good. So next on the list is David Lee Roth. I love David Lee Roth. I love his personality. He's always energetic. He's always positive, very bubbly, and can sing very well. You know, uh, I think he was the best front man for Van Halen. Next on the list is Dion Craig. Now another response is, who is Dion Craig? Back in the 80s, I want to say probably the mid 80s, a group came out by the name of Cool School. I did a cover of one of their songs called Make Up Your Mind. Jesse Johnson from the time and another gentleman produced that album. And it was great. Uh, from start to finish, every song was well written and well produced. And Dion Craig is a very good singer. What I love about his style is uh, very laid back, but very powerful at the same time. He's not a screamer, but yet he hits some really nice notes. And from song to song on that album, 
and I you know I recommend you guys check out my cover uh, "Make Up Your Mind" by Cool Cool School. Great great composition, and you can hear his voice on there as far as very good vocalist. You know that whole entire album was just a masterpiece. And it's a shame that there are certain artists that just don't stay around for a long period of time because they have so much to offer. But one thing about the music industry is very fickle, and it's sometimes about luck and not always about talent that you can hang around for a long time. Because to this day, I think that these guys should be still recording, just like with the next entry I'm going to give you. But I just want to say this first. Uh, there are some people in the industry, I guess you can call it, when they become reach ice, iconic status, their main granddaddy, and they're just going to basically ride the wave today to decide to retire from entertainment or die, even though I don't think they have that much more to offer. And here's just a, a few of those, and forgive me for veering off of the course of the list, but I think, and it's just my opinion, you know, Prince is one of those individuals. To me, Prince has not done anything creative or memorable since the Sign of the Time album, you know, that, that that title song was a good song, well written, great lyrics, great uh, chord progressions. And Madonna's another one, been around forever, ain't really done anything new. But you know, people still support them and still go out to the concerts, but that's just my opinion, that they're lucky. You know, again, they haven't really put out anything uh, different or good in decades, but they're still around and making a whole lot of money. But you know, that's the music business. But getting back to the list, the next individual on my list is Emmanuel Rahim. He came from the group GQ. They had that big hit, uh, Disco Nice, I Do Love You, and Sitting in the Park. And Sitting in the Park and I Do Love You, Lo I Do Love You is actually a, those are two remakes from the 60s that are gentleman by the name of, what is his name? I'm sorry, if, uh, he escapes me now, but they did a remake of these, of this, uh, this, this gentleman's uh, two songs, and they were hits. Billy, I forgot the last name. I'm sorry. But again, getting back to the list, uh, Phil Collins. You know, who doesn't love Phil Collins' voice? Uh, majority of the British singers are just great singers. I mean, Phil Collins, uh, you know, just to name a few from England. And great musician, great writer, you know, just an all-around very prolific entertainer. Uh, love all his compositions. I mean, I could sit down and listen to Phil Collins all day long. Next on the list is hometown great R. Kelly. Now, setting aside from the personality or the personal things he's dealing with or been accused of, I think R. Kelly is a musical genius. He's up there to me. He's the modern day Stevie Wonder. Uh, I've heard him sing different stuff. I mean, I, he, on one of the, uh, I think it's the double album, the first one, uh, it's red on the cover. He did an opera piece, you know, he's singing opera. It's like, wow, who is that? And it was R. Kelly. He has a tremendous range. And one of my all-time favorite ballads, and I always uh, stress this for singers that are trying to, you know, sharpen their craft, use the song Honey Love, which is the, it was on the f debut album. Use that as your model, because what R. Kelly does in that song is just unbelievable as he's continuing to sing throughout the song, he's, his crescendo is building, meaning that uh, when he gets to his change in the song, and the second time he gets to it, he's singing an octave higher. And he's constantly like building. And at the very end of that song, he hits a note. It's just unbelievable. For one thing, uh, it's long in length. The second thing, the note, the how he wavered the note, and when he came out of the note, he was still in key, you know, it was, it was like he was doing acrobats with his vocals, you know. A lot of people, I think, miss that, but R. Kelly is a tremendous singer, you know. He's, and he's another one who's pat, who patterned himself initially behind Stevie Wonder in the early days, but he's patterned himself by a lot of people, uh, Sam Cooke as well, and some other singers. So, uh, unbelievable vocalist, you know, regardless of, you know, you like him or not, or whatever, the things he's dealing with, or, or whatever. Uh, I set that aside because I'm not trying to analyze the man, I'm analyzing the talent. So he's definitely, you know, on my list. And last and not least, Phyllis Hyman. You know, what can you say about Phyllis Hyman? Uh, everybody loved her. They loved her talent, her vocal skills, and they loved her for being just her. She was one of the few artists that didn't get caught up in that glamour thing and the PR thing. She told it like it was. And I remember seeing an uh, interview with her, and they asked her about the today's talent. 
this is like in the mid 80s and uh she was kind of you know ripping some ripping ripping some shreds you know uh she got on Janet Jackson as far as studio vocalist, using studio tricks and all that. And she said, you know, women from the old school, they just came, came, got in front of the mic and sang. You know, none of that pitch tuning and let's add some stuff to your vocals and make you sound, you know, totally different and, you know, studio perfect. She didn't believe in that. You know, it was either you had talent or you didn't. You know, so uh, I loved her for her realism and I also loved her for her vocal talent because she was a very tremendous singer and it's sad that we lost her so early and I just want to close off by saying this there are a lot of things in this country or perhaps in this world that we haven't got a handle on and one of them is uh, your mental status you know because if you go and get into an accident car accident somebody shoot a knife you uh, you go to the hospital they stitch you up and, and save your life you know they on top of their uh, emergency medicine but when it comes to I'm not feeling like I'm, I should and I'm not myself anymore unfortunately they give you a bunch of pills and just hope that something works like you're a guinea pig and I'm going to say this quickly and then I'm going to sign off the majority of the emotional problems start in your gut because your gut holds your immune system and it also holds uh, your sense of well-being as far as the serotonin that's produced in the body is produced in the gut when you have some gut issues like yeast, candida, and some other things like that, it clogs up the um, uh, digestive. It clogs up the digestive system, which won't allow the body to produce the serotonin that's needed. Seventy percent of the serotonin that's produced in the body is produced in the gut, and when again the gut is clogged up with yeast and some other bacteria, it, it doesn't produce that serotonin that the body needs. So you feel depressed, uh, and a lot of times people are like you'll be okay and you know, just go to the doctor and get some antidepressants. Antidepressants really don't solve the problem. Uh, it kind of uh, put a band-aid over the issue. And I'm a big advocate of what's causing the problems and let's fix what's causing the problem. As opposed to, let's just give you a couple of little medications and kind of tone it down a little bit and keep you on that for the rest of your life and damage your liver. But uh, I'm not going to get into that, that discussion medical. This was about the top 10. But I just want to kind of touch on that, that, you know, if we look at what, what the problem is and try to solve it, people like Phyllis Hyman would be still walking the earth and producing great music and we would still be enjoying it. That was the point that I'm making to tad this into this, this list. So on that note, I hope this was entertaining and until next time, take care.